श्री गणेशाय नम वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटि समप्रभ निर्विघ्न कुर मे देव सर्वकार्यु सर्वदा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरव नम वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगदुर कृष्ण वंदे जगदुर हरि ओम सो टुडे वी स्टार्ट चैप्टर सेवन ऑफ द गीता एंड वी गिवन इट अ ब्रेक फॉर रामचरित मानस नाउ वी गेट बैक टू गीता सो टुडे दिस इज नॉलेज एंड विजडम देर आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स मोस्ट ऑफ अस हैव नॉलेज बट वी डू नॉट हैव विजडम वी आर नॉट वाइज इनफ टू अप्लाई दैट नॉलेज टू आर लाइफ बट इन दिस चैप्टर mostly krishna tells us how it can be applied or you know how what you should do what are the tricks to apply this wisdom <coughs> till the 6th chapter you know we had taken you up to a meditational chapter but that meditational chapter was very very elementary gurudev used to say that it is for beginners how to say it how the asan should be what you should do where you should concentrate and all those things and what are the disciplines to sit for jap all that now then after that see from chapter 6 to chapter 12 this is the second part of the gita because gita generally people scholars i mean divide it into three parts first six chapters second six chapters and then the last six chapters they say that the mahavakya that is tatvamasi that mahavakya is what the gita explains so <clears throat> the first six chapters explain tvam tvam is you what are you who are you you remember arjuna's problems and how he didn't want to fight what we should do how we should uh, gear up to battle or how battle of life how we should gear up to the battle of life what we should do so that was the first six chapters all describing about us and our problems now the second six chapters second portion that is from the 6th chapter to the 12th chapter this you know gurudev used to say is for post graduates and after that the other six chapters he used to say are for research scholars now whatever it is you see the thing is that this upadesh vakya this is called upadesh vakya tatvamasi that means that thou art you are that because the hindu philosophy the i would rather say the vedantic philosophy believes that you are nothing else but the pure spirit you are nothing else but pure consciousness so that is uh, what it tells you now <coughs> the next six chapters say tat that is from 6 to 12 describe tat tat means that so what is that super consciousness what is that pure consciousness that dynamizes matter that dynamizes the body because the body is just matter mind intellect everything is just an equipment given to you and that equipment you use to live out your own desires now here uh, see so this mahavakya and asi asi is the last word of the mahavakya 
three words tat tvam asi so asi is describing the link the connection between tat and tvam and how beautifully they are connected and there is a there is a wedding between the two so what comprises of that wedding and how does that function so this is what basically it doesn't mean that there is a divorce between the body and the and the consciousness but how they function together there is a perfect identity between both of them so this chapter expounds the verb asi in the last six chapters in the last six uh, chapters of the gita all right now then uh, see here arjun has not really asked the question but his face actually shows the question that the lord had ended chapter 6 by meditation calling it the most superior exercise that man can do the superior most exercise that man can perform for him to realize his own self now over here he says that if meditation is superior medita guru uh, the teacher was saying meditation is superior to tapasvi those who torture the body or they have tremendous body disciplines he said it is super to a gyani gyani means a highly knowledgeable person of the vedas he says it is meditation is even more superior to karma the karmi performs actions even if he is a selfless karmi performing actions the meditator is superior to him so arjun is trying to tell him that there you say that the meditator is the superior most and you are telling me that you fight the battle which is karma so that question would come into arjuna's mind as it would come into our minds right similarly also he had said that um, you know somebody who has got a finite mind like us how can the finite reach the infinite through meditation finite does not have the powers does not have the capacity the capability to reach the infinite how is that possible so krishna says in this chapter that he will answer that as well hmm? how the limited can reach the unlimited how the mortal can reach the immortality and also how he can embrace the super consciousness now uh, see he is giving up promise over here and that promise is that i will explain to you that thing now we start this with श्री भगवान उवाच मैया सक्त मना पार्थ योगम युंजन्म दाशय असंशय सामग्रमासी तृणु तृणु यू हैव हर्ड बिफोर ऑल्सो तृणु मीन्स लिसन टू दिस लिसन टू दैट दैट यू हियर दैट तृणु that you hear now maya saktamana partha he says the translation with the mind intent on me o partha practicing yoga and taking refuge in me how thou shalt without doubt know me fully that do thou hear tat shrinu listen to that i am going to explain that now the mind intent on me now this is not just thinking of the lord it is with love stamped in the mind total total etched in the heart that much of love for the lord when you have that is maya sakt mujh mein aasakt aasakt to word jante na mujh mein aasakt man man is mind so the mind totally seeped in steeped in love for the lord and partha he is calling arjun partha gurudev used to say that he calls arjun partha 
whenever he wants to tell him that oh fool listen to me because partha is from mud 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 made made of mud is called partha parthiv aap kehte hai na parthiv sharir when somebody dies you say parthiv sharir that means <coughs> body made of matter so maya sakt man partha yogam yunjan man mad ashraya so take refuge in me mad ashraya take refuge in me so it is not only love it is also surrender total surrender to the lord will help you to rise in spirituality total it is with his grace when he really helps you believe me when he helps you you rise in spirituality you can experience uh, godliness in in yourself so maya sakt manah with the mind totally engrossed in me that is the only way for the mind to embrace the unlimited surrendering to the lord so three things he says first thing mind intent on me number 2 practicing yoga yoga is not those exercises that he is talking about yoga means single pointed intentional desire to join with him to connect with him to be one with him that is yoga yoga means to join taking refuge in me this is number 3 so even if you have yoga even if your mind is intent on the lord and loves the lord you have to seek his help you have to surrender to him you have to pray to him to help you on the path to meditation hmm? so here it is mm, the student is made to believe now how how the unlimited can uh, how the limited can touch the unlimited or reach the unlimited hmm? he can only do it with a very very highly trained and purified mind the mind when it slowly slowly starts getting purified the outreaches of the mind are tremendous even today psychology is doing experiments on that and believing that the frontiers of the mind can expand unlimited the powers of the mind the outreach of the mind is much much more than an everyday mind of a human being who who thinks that i have used all the potentialities of mind that is not true we have hardly used any bit of our mind so here it is that uh, a disciplined mind totally obeying you totally in your command not frittered away ha huh? it is not an gurudev used to say not with an animal mind the instrument cannot be an animal mind like you have what does he mean by animal mind what is cooked for lunch today the mind goes there somebody a little bit of a coffee smell the mind has gone there hmm? somebody said something to you the mind and you felt bad the mind will constantly go there right somebody praised you and the ego is inflated ha huh? again the mind will go there so that is what the animal mind the mind is not in your control the, the all kind of things keep coming into your mind crowding it with garbage now that kind of mind certainly cannot reach the unlimited but when the mind is purified totally disciplined totally obeying your command that when you say stay fixed here the mind is there only then can you even try to walk this path hmm? now then let's come to the next next one see over here also the second uh, one also will tell you the same thing but a subtler the mind subtler is its powers you have to when the mind is purified it has very very subtle reach very subtle reach all kind of brilliant ideas all kind of creativity 
you can solve problems you can you get powers you know which are not the normal human powers so that even in ordinary yogi experiences so what say of people who become siddh purush you know they have a lot of power jnanam teham savekyanam ida vaksham yasheshatah yajgyatvaneh bhuyonyat gyatavyam gyatavam avashishyate it says i shall declare to thee in full this is important ha huh? note this phrase in full this knowledge look at the promise of krishna i shall declare to thee in full that means not just little by little not also hiding a few things and telling you a few things ha huh? mm. so <clears throat> combined with realization which being known i full this knowledge combined with realization which being known nothing more here remains to be known pehle to ye dekhiye ki in full you know he is saying in full haven't you experienced that when you go to a friend's house for dinner your friend has cooked something very nice your husband has liked it very much and he says why don't you ask her how she did it so you ask her the recipe and that friend very 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 slyly misses out one ingredient from the recipe or one step from the recipe and tells you all the rest so you make it and when you make it everyone in the family says no it doesn't taste like that you know and then what has happened is that that one ingredient is missing so a lot of people try even at such a low level they try these things but krishna here is promising that i will tell you in full i will not hide anything from you you are a dear student of mine and i as a beloved teacher you attune to me you are surrendering to me and i will tell you in full this knowledge not only the knowledge but combined with realization also tell you how to reach the realized state this is a huge promise by krishna but he says which being known nothing more here remains to be known hmm? so nothing mo- nothing more remains to be known means nothing more is to be added which is worth knowing okay now you will say that even a full lifetime is not enough to know all knowledge knowledge is very vast it is very very vast you know how many disciplines there are how many subjects of study there are and in each subject how many branches of different different topics and learnings and sub topics there are how can any one human being know everything and know everything so that nothing else remains to be known have you ever met anybody like that you will say certainly not so what does this mean nothing more here remains to be known you see the thing is that the fields of knowledge are infinite in number certainly they are but when you gain this realization you gain that by which all knowledge is known that power which enables the mind to gain knowledge which enables the understand uh, intellect to analyze to dissect to understand that power you gain so when you gain that power you gain the power to gain any knowledge that is what the meaning over here is see i mean and then fully fully of course you see when countries ask the secret of atom bomb or new, some nuclear power nuclear uh, power then the other country does not supply the full technology it will supply 99% of the technology and say this is it so that you can't make it or you make it it will be faulty or when you want to use it it won't work 
you know, so something like that. So that is not it. Huh? Now see, the divine song over here, which is the Gita, it exhausts the entire knowledge. Because once you know this, once you know this, it will help you to sail through life beautifully, comfortably, happily. And that is what the fruit of all knowledge should be, isn't it? The fruit of all knowledge is not becoming this or becoming that. The fruit of all knowledge is how to live happily, sail through life without any discomfort in the mind, without any tension in the mind, without any sorrow in the mind. You gain everything in life only for these, isn't it? Gaining more money, gaining more power, gaining fame, gaining even knowledge, academic or whatever. For what? You feel that it will give you those things that will make you happy. Here is a knowledge that will, it exhausts itself and it reads simple, but it is very, very exhaustive knowledge. And this, believe me, shows you the art of living smoothly. Now, uh, according to Shankara, all knowledge is jnana and the applicability of that knowledge, the actual experiencing of that knowledge is vijnana. He calls it vijnana. Hmm? So, uh, this chapter is vijnana. It is jnana and also vijnana, both the things. Hmm? So, after this, but the student always feels that after the study of the Shastra, does he become fit enough to uh, retire into the jungles, as Gurudev says, and then stay there alone by himself and experience uh, perfection? Hmm? No, that is not what Krishna's philosophy is about. Krishna's philosophy is always about gaining knowledge and applying it to everyday life. It does not say that you leave everything and run off to the uh, to to, uh, to a cave in the Himalayas and sit there thereafter. No, not at all. You will not also be able to do it. Unless and until you fully realize and your potential is no dependence on anything, you cannot do it. So, also, this uh, uh, Gurudev's commentary also promises, also this verse promises, that even during the discourse, he says, even during the discourse, he says, if you are totally tuned to the teacher and your mind is fully, fully absorbed in the words of the teacher, you can realize. This is the promise he gives over here. He says that combined with realization, look at that. Doesn't Krishna say that? He says, I am not only giving you the full knowledge. But also if you listen to me carefully, if you are totally surrendered to me, if you are totally in tune with me, you can realize even while listening to the teacher. Now I have something to share over here. <clears throat> of course, Gurudev used to say, this means total attention, not dozing off with a tidy breakfast in your stomach and sitting there and Gurudev singing a lullaby and you think this is a nice time to sleep because the sunlight, sun rays are coming through the window, falling on you nice and warm and full breakfast in your stomach. Not like that. Gurudev used to say extremely attentively. The Vedant is taught only to a very, very fit student. There has to be patrata for Vedant. Otherwise, it will go over your head. You will not even understand. Leave aside imbibing it. And that is why I have this very interesting thing to share with you. Gurudev was so, so strict when he used to teach us. He would not even allow us to move. We dared not even look at anybody. We dared not move our attention. We dared not move our feet or shift a position. Because he was constantly eye-to-eye eye conveying knowledge. 
also <coughs> he did not allow us to go out and have tea nobody was allowed to go out of the ashram while in the camp no phone calls to your home no letters no tv no nothing and cell phones to the nahi thank god so there was no nothing and it was only teacher and taught teacher and taught day and night so his he used to attune our minds to receive the knowledge from him and he says he but you know it despite all all this that he used to do huh? he used to say don't move i am painting and if the canvas moves my painting will not be perfect so just sit still that is how we used to sit for the class hmm? abhi to aapka online hai so somebody is sipping coffee somebody has got their feet up on the sofa somebody is getting up and switching it off for some time pausing it and then coming back and you know none of that you cannot do vedant like that that is not and that is what the teacher here is saying that you know you have to Uh, be totally in tune with him for that for this kind of an experience you have to be totally in tune now he used to say self realization is gurudev used to say is in, instantaneous immediate it can happen while listening to the teacher also i have to share this with you it's of course a joke in sidbari a lot of people experienced got you know uh, got flashes of experiencing this great truth and that is why a whole lot of people used to say this that you know i'll share a secret with you you know i think i'm going to realize a lot of people used to say this even you used to i of course never said it but you used to even feel that this is just about to happen and you used to float around in some kind of a joy in sidwari ask anybody they will tell you those who were tuned to gurudev very carefully everyone was walking 6 inches above the ground nobody was on ground so this experience what he is talking about that krishna says that i will make you realize i will show you how to realize this is what is true if you are totally attuned to the teacher the teacher and taught gurudev used to even tell us that none of you is fit enough to sit in a vedantic class Now we used to all look down and look here and there. कि भाई अब क्या करें? You know we couldn't get up and go from there. We didn't know what to do. But we used to keep sitting, and he used to keep teaching. Okay, come to the third verse. Manushyanam sahasreshu kashchidyatate siddhaye yatam ape siddhanam. Kashchin mam vetti tatvata ha. Among now, this is carefully, huh? Carefully, what I was saying last time when Guru Dev said that none of you is fit enough to sit in my class. Look what this verse says: Among thousands of men, one per chance strives for perfection. One per chance among thousands of people. then even among those successful ones successful striving ones only one per chance knows me in essence so many of them the vivek churamani goes a little before that also it says there are one in millions of people who even hear shruti shruti is the first sadhana and how many in thousands and millions and lakhs of people there will be one person who will be blessed enough even to come to the door of this scripture and amongst those thousands and thousands of people there will be one who will be striving to do what the scripture is saying and then amongst all those who are striving for striving for perfection there will be among those successful strives only one per chance knows me in essence do you realize how rare this is you should really thank the lord to be one of those greatly hugely blessed people who have risen from the darwinian animal the darwin darwin says you are a thinking animal all the rest is animal 
your desires to eat to sleep to to produce children to have a family to this to that it's all like other animals everything your entire bodily functions are those of other animals so what is more you are an animal as long as you have no control on your mind think about it if your mind can just run off at a tangent and think whatever wherever if your mind is making you irritable and sorry if your mind is making you angry if it is powerful enough to do that to you you are still an animal you are an, on an animal level now for you to become man man manushya jisko kehte hain manushya man man what is it you have to have a beautifully ethically controlled morally sound disciplined mind in your control unless you have that you will remain at that low very very low level hmm? to ye siddh banne ke liye <coughs> bahut mushkil hai now amongst those who hear how many of them grasp think if you do not listen intently with a totally focused mind you will not grasp this knowledge is so subtle and it is about the ultimate reality so if your mind is not focused you will not follow don't you know that even when you are sitting in an ordinary class physics or biology or maths or something you you miss your mind runs away somewhere and you miss out on one link the rest is all gone isn't it you do not follow the other steps because that one link is gone so the more the reason for you to hear very very carefully see adapters are many even when they listen evolvers are very few evolvers are rare carefully adapters are many evolvers are very few this is true of this knowledge and therefore he says that those who can listen to it intently those who can hear it very very carefully are the ones that evolve or they make an effort to evolve hmm? see jesus is one muhammad is one buddha is one and so many followers there is a population of buddhists isn't it <coughs> but buddha will be only one ram or krishna will be only one right so it is only such a realized master who can roll up the world like a little rug and put it under his arm because he is totally controlled of it and he can go where he likes and do what he likes thereafter but people like you and me we are totally governed and controlled by our mind notice it notice your mind even even students you know who have heard vedanta and generally lose awareness of how the mind is dragging them they get dragged here there and everywhere there are very very few who have full control over the mind and grasp the mind make it obey their command see raman maharishi used to say the mind is controlled by the ego of a human being and how to detect the ego is that whenever you are sorrowful angry or irritable that is the ego playing you have to think of the statement of raman maharishi carefully contemplate on it and whenever you are angry or irritable or sorrowful catch it catch it right there and understand that it is your mind playing with you your mind has got an image of yourself so and so hurt me he said this to me what do you think you are 
I am this, I am that, I am that. This is all an image you have made of yourself. Isn't it? So how to break that? How to roll it up? How to get out of that? How to conquer that? Is a huge effort. That is the striving. And that striving is the one that is going to be taught to you by Krishna here. So it looks that self-realization is very easy. It is very simple. Then the question arises, why doesn't it come to everyone? This is the reason. This is the reason that we have an animal mind. That animal mind is full of animal desires. I want, I want, I want. I want to drink this, I want to eat this. Pick up any paper. How many ads are there of eateries? Where to eat what? Where to next to go and have a coffee, which is a new coffee joint with some fancy name or the other? Hmm? Now there are cafe, Sardar cafe, Sardar ji's cafe, or this cafe, that cafe. And you want to go and taste every, do you think the coffee will be different there? Coffee is coffee, but the mind immediately runs to taste something new, to drink something new, to eat something different, to wear something different, to, I mean, how many clothes? How different can you get? How many pieces of jewelry? Just go on making all kinds of combinations. Does that evolve you? No, it doesn't evolve you. It only satisfies animal desires, that is all. So very few can discover in themselves the urge to rise, the urge to perfect themselves, the urge to no matter what, you want to give up everything else and give priority, complete priority to evolving, to perfecting yourself. How many are there? That is the reason why, though this is very easy, you do not reach there. Gurudev used to say that the Lord is smiling behind you and whistling and saying, hey, I'm standing right here. Just look back. But you don't. You only look ahead. What can I get from the material world? And therefore, see, even people who are almost reaching there, you know, I dare say that Gurudev lifted everybody that came in contact with him he lifted those people who stayed with him for months on end. He lifted them very high. But then what happens is, which the Gita warns you about, that that is the grace of the teacher. You feel elevated because of his tapas, because of his words. But then what happens is that you do not have the power to sustain it. So slowly, slowly, some desire, wavered vasana or the other, will rise in your mind and it will sweep you off your feet despite yourself. You will know that this is what is happening to you, but you will be helpless. See, the body body takes birth because of this only. The body is formed for you to exhaust your desires. That is why the body, everybody's body is different. Everybody's mind is different because all our desires are different. From the body of a human being, you can, many people can quite make out what this human being's desires might have been. From his mind, from his speech, you can make out that what are the prime desires of this human being. So here the mind pulls you down and it will, you know, Gurudev used to say, unless the mind is totally devoid of desire totally devoid of anything else but that, but that, that is alone what I want, you will not be able to rise. Hmm? And that is why in the Bible they say that a rich man, it is very difficult for a rich man to go through the gates of heaven. Even a camel can pass through the eye of a needle, but a rich man cannot pass through the gates of heaven. What does that mean? Does that mean that one should stop collecting wealth? No, that's not what it is. It is the wealth of vasanas. 
the more desires you have i want i want i want i want to collect i want to hoard you will never go through the gates of heaven because all your energy is used up in collecting all your energy is used up in hoarding and you go on hoarding till one day you are off that's all it guru dev used to give the example of a silkworm and he used to say that just like the silkworm you to go on building a house around you you go on putting uh, you know that silken thread around you that is the house of the silkworm isn't it then what do they do they don't want you they want your house so the whole thing they put into boiling water the silkworm dies and the house is taken by the silk manufacturer this is what happens to all of us we go on collecting our whole life is a story of accumulation you accumulate more and more and more collect and collect my this my that my that so those materialistic desires are the wealth that you possess and if you cling to that you cannot go through heaven now in the, uh, this geeta you know the thing is that the lord himself is an example how beautifully he is always smiling in a jiffy he gives up anything he gave up dwarka he gave up vrindavan never to look back again that is the mastery over the self and that is what we aspire for that perfection that we aspire for we have to have the mental stamina to retain the the teachers teachings in our mind hmm? and understand that it is only because of our enslavery to our mind that most of the people say that i have understood it but i am not able to do it isn't does that sound familiar many many students say that that i know it i have understood it but i am not able to do it it is they say it is impractical or they say it is not possible to do why because of this alone so we pause here next time we take verse 4 om purnamad purnamidam purnat purnamadachate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hi hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om